Hey everybody, Josh for Populi here. I'm your host for the Populi Show, the Popcast. We don't know what we're calling it. Um, whatever it says on the YouTube thing, that's what that's what this is on the the title. I've been doing support at Populi for years. I make instructional videos. You may have seen me around. That I was trying to place. That's, that's, that's me. That's where that's I know me. you from. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The on on YouTube. Um, and I'm joined by my friend Brendan. Brendan, you've also been here for years, long, much longer than me. Since the beginning. Since the very Since beginning. Since we started in 2007, 8 or 9 or 10. How you, somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, there's like when we were invented and then when we actually became a company. Brendan, what do you do? I am the writer. I write everything that needs to be written here, more or less. Yes. Um, or I proofread it. The knowledge base takes up most of my time, uh, blog articles. If you have ever looked at the release notes, then you've definitely run into Brendan's work. Brendan, I've always wondered what are release notes? So are you saying you, you don't read them every week? I didn't say that. Release notes are a weekly digest of whatever we've put out there, um, bug fixes, new features, improvements, just a way to keep our users informed about um, what we put out there this week. They might discover that there's a new button that takes scratches an itch mm -hmm. that they've needed scratched. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that's something that, say, I could even find in Populi, a release note. Yeah, if you go to the knowledge base, there'll be a section there that says release notes and announcements. You click that, then you click the other thing in there that says release notes and the most recent ones are at the top. I understand I could follow those. Apparently there's a follow button. If you click that follow button, you'll get an email whenever I put something out there. I might just do that. Brendan, I understand that we recently made an update to some options for how payment plans interact with financial aid. We did. A few months ago, uh, we replaced an old checkbox setting on payment plans. It used to just be aid affects uh, payment plan or aid does not affect payment plan. But a lot of uh, customers had different ideas about what exactly that was doing. So after some uh, interaction with them, uh, we now give you three options there. One is aid does not affect plan. So that means that if a student has financial aid scheduled, the payment plan amounts just ignores that altogether. Based on allocation date, so it will only subtract uh, scheduled aid from the payment amounts for dates after the aid is allocated. And then finally, all aid affects plan. So if the student has financial aid scheduled, then the payment plan is going to back that out of the payment deadlines, regardless of when the aid was allocated or scheduled. Or so basically, there are two real simple settings, like it will affect and won't affect, and then there's one that's a little bit smarter that's actually paying attention to the, the date that the aid is allocated for, and then also the dates um, that are set on the payment plan for each of those due dates there. Does that sound right? Right, so yeah, so the allocation date is the date that you set up the scheduled aid okay. payment. So if on August 1st, you schedule um, $1,000 of aid to be dispersed on September 1st for a student's account, the allocation date is August 1st. Gotcha. And the scheduled date is September 1st. Okay, okay. So uh, keep an eye out for that when you're setting up payment plans or adjusting existing ones. Brendan, one thing I've been hearing about are these focus sessions that we started doing this last year. Um, what, what, where do these happen? Oh, focus sessions. Uh, they happen on Zoom, where okay. uh, one of our uh, uh, CS guys, that stands for customer support. Thank you. They will get a uh, small group of popular users and walk them through the, uh, the introductory basics to a certain feature in Populi. It might be the degree audit or setting up academics or uh, basics on financial aid. Mm -hmm. So we try and hit the major areas of Populi mm -hmm. and uh, give people an opportunity to you know, just get the run through of here's how this feature works, what it does and things you should be aware of. And then about half the session is given over to uh, user questions like, okay, my school does it this way. What do I 
click to make that happen. Sounds like these would be very involved. What do they take, four to six hours? Uh, in fact, only one hour. Okay. Yeah. One hour. Okay. I guess you can get something done in an hour. Yeah. Well, it sounds like they do. Yeah. And how many people are generally in these sessions? Typically, it's four to five popular users. So it's a pretty small group. Um, gives uh, everybody an opportunity to get their own questions in and uh, you know get sorted out on whatever features being covered. Fantastic. If I wanted to sign up for one of these focus sessions, hmm. how would I do that? Well, you go to the Populi Knowledge Base, which you can get to uh, through Populi, and then the Release Notes and Announcements section. So you go into that, and then there's a list of focus sessions right there. And then you just find the one that you want to sign up for. Uh, there's a sign up link in each focus session post. And then every Friday in the Release Notes, I talk about the focus sessions that are coming up for the following week. So if you pay attention to release notes, uh, there's a way into focus sessions there as well. That sounds real easy. It is. It's astoundingly easy. For our next segment, it really comes out of just a um, grim reality that even at Populi, we have to eat. We have a whole reserve of snacks, and Brennan and I have each chosen one to show you today. I just have almonds, uh, salted almonds from, how do you say that? Sahale? Yeah. Do you think you pronounce yeah. the E I, I or is it Sahale? I think you say Sahale. Sahale. Okay. Sahale snacks. California. Oh, these almonds are from California. California. And um, right on the package, uh, there's a picture of almonds that have been enlarged for detail. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I wouldn't want to eat an almond that big. That would be ridiculous. At any rate, uh, these are, uh, they're Salty and roasty and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These, this is a, uh, it says Fresh A uh, Gourmet Tuna Meal. This is Provence Niçois. And uh, these, this is a delightful little meal um, that, uh, that you can eat in, I don't, I think I've probably done it in under, you know, 20 seconds. And so that's a little insight into snacks with Brendan and Josh. <laughs> Next up, Brendan, I understand that we have added new settings to control how faculty and teaching assistants interact with private contact information. Yes, uh, so first off, in case you didn't know, you can set any contact info item on a person's profile to private, which means only staff users uh, would be able to see it. Uh, if it's for students, uh, faculty and teaching assistants can still also see it. Just to make sure we're giving our schools all the tools they need to color inside the lines of FERPA, there's a new setting in uh, account uh, security, uh, which lets you control the level of access faculty and teaching assistant users have to private contact info. So uh, you can allow it, uh, you can shut it off altogether, or uh, the halfway setting which lets those users see private contact info for students that they are currently teaching. In other words, they would still be able to have private contact info for like, if they need to send out something to their class, they would still be able to communicate with those students, but they wouldn't be able to just generally see private contact info. Correct. Okay. Yeah. One of the big things that, um, that uh, I understand we've been working on here that I've been hearing a lot about, a lot of chatter, is uh, forms and applications. And uh, those, we've, we've made big changes there, but they're currently in beta. Why do those things get lumped together? Why are forms and applications sort of talked about in the same breath there? Okay, so a long time ago, we built applications and there's basically a certain uh, we'll call it an engine uh, that application forms were built on. But then we added the new forms feature, which is a whole new thing, uh, which had uh, different use cases than admissions applications. And that had its own engine, if you will. So we've recently redesigned applications to be built atop the forms engine, okay. uh, which enables applications to do things that customers have wanted them to do for years. So there's going to be pages, conditional fields, uh, a number of other improvements. So they're spoken of in the same breath because uh, we've got this uh, huge new chunk of code that lots of important things are going to be built on and we haven't fully released it to all of our customers yet. It's out in uh, beta form 
uh, at this point. Both forms and applications are coming out in beta. Why um, would we release something in beta? What's the reasoning behind that? Oh, well, they're both uh, pretty big features. So forms uh, did not exist two years ago. And as I said, you know, we built a whole new engine, as it were, uh, for them to to uh, to be designed upon. There are still some bugs. There are still various kinks. We have a detailed, lengthy uh, testing process here, but it doesn't compare with what our users put our features through. But also there's just a wide variety of use cases for forms, and we wanna make sure that when we roll them out to everybody, they can just accommodate all the possibilities out there. I mean, you can use forms for, we have people using them for financial aid applications, uh, dorm room uh, cleanup requests, yeah. all sorts of things. So this is an opportunity for us to learn from our customers how they want to use this feature and uh, for us to build it out some more and make it more bulletproof. Admissions applications, uh, we're hanging back on that um, because there's just so much application data that has to be migrated into this new data model that we have uh, without getting too technical. Um, we just want to make sure that as we move you from the old kind of applications to the new style, uh, that your old applications still work in the new model. So we're just being extra cautious about how we do that. Folks can uh, sign up for the beta. So if you're interested, feel free to send in a support request and we'll get you set up. I understand it's come to my attention that we have a Discord server. Oh, yes, what yes we do. What is a Discord server? A Discord server is essentially a chat room or messaging forum. Um, and in our case, uh, we have one set up for Populi users. Uh, it's replacing the old user forum that we had on uh, our knowledge base, which uh, relied too much on basically email and wasn't as useful and vivacious as we wanted it to be. So our Discord server, uh, we've got a bunch of rooms and channels on there where academic admins can talk to other academic admins, financial aid people can ask very detailed, specific questions about what it is they do at their schools and uh, how to make it work in Populi. We're all on there to answer questions. So it's, uh, it's our updated user forum. Exactly, and it also gives us an opportunity to communicate directly to our users, so we like post our videos and stuff there. So there's a there's an opportunity just to um, to interact that way as well. So it, it's mostly about facilitating that back and forth between users, but then um, we can communicate uh, to our users as well. Yeah, and uh, we were talking about uh, beta releases. Um, we have other beta releases that, um, so for instance, we're rolling out a new API and we're asking people who are interested in that to request it on our Discord server and then give us feedback. Um, so it's really good for computer people to talk to each other. Mm. We're not computer people. No, we're not. Um, if you do want to sign up for the Discord, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see help, and then one of the options under help is join our user community, and uh, you should be able to find everything you need from that link to get added to the Discord server. Brendan, over on the right-hand corner, I saw this little guy over there. That hasn't been there for very long, has it? What is that? That is our new alert system for announcements about whatever it might be, blog posts, uh, upcoming maintenance windows, uh, any number of things, new videos. Whenever we want to call attention to something uh, in our uh, resources somewhere to popular users, that little symbol is gonna light up. It's something we've struggled with a little bit because we haven't had a good way of communicating directly to our users from within Populi. We can, they can follow release notes, they can go check our blog, stuff like that, but we haven't had a good way of like putting things right in front of them as they're using Populi. So this is, it sounds like, a way to do that. Yeah, we wanted a way to do that, so we made a way to do that. And we did do that, and we have done this, and boy did we have fun doing it. And yep. that's it for the Populi show. Thanks for watching. Thanks for using Populi. Thank you, Brendan.
Thank you, Josh.